Ravens for staying this late in the day. I know that you're probably very worn down, but to play this point as much as possible, I'm going to try and be interesting and energetic. So I'm going to preempt a question that I get quite a lot, which is, who am I? Uh, my name's Sean. This is a picture of me when I was around about six or seven. Um, it's kind of difficult to know for sure, but the odds are in that photo I was probably thinking about building problems. That's all I wanted to do at that age. It didn't really happen, but well, that same kind of attitude and that desire to build things has brought me to this place right now because I make technology. Uh, I'm here with Athena. We are a competitive intelligence technology for search and We see ourselves as experts in intelligence and in search advertising as a whole. Uh, and that's what I'm here to talk to you about, which is how you can use competitive intelligence to kind of reinvigorate your search and understand what's going on in the world. A bit of housekeeping before I go on. If you're on Twitter, we'd like to tweet at Athena or at underscore Sean Russell. Uh, come talk to us at that. So, open question. How well do you know your beautiful world? Back in July, we did a webinar, and in that we ran a survey of all the people listening, and we found some slightly alarming details. The first of which is that 27% of digital marketers don't want to their competitors in any way at all. They don't really know what's going on. An even larger percentage, 65, don't use any kind of technology to their competitors. And of those that are doing that, Generally, they are looking at their own keywords. So they're not really looking at the whole space around them, they are looking at already what they are familiar with. I'd like to draw a comparison. I think that this is a little bit like the idea that the world is flat. Thousands of years ago, it's realistic for someone with no kind of enlightenment scientific knowledge to look out at the world and kind of think, well, it looks like that. So I'm pretty sure it is. They're familiar with their surroundings, and that's the way it seems, that's the conclusion they reach. But, funny enough, we know that that is... Uh... One second. We know that's not the case. You missed the exciting animation, never mind. Um, we know that the world is round, right? And this enables lots of things uh, for humanity to do. So, we can do stuff like find new territories, we found America because we understood the world was round and how to get to this place because of that. It means that we can understand weather patterns, climate change, uh, natural disasters that we can track and we can predict them. It means we can link everything up with technology, so mobile phones, the internet, television, and underpinning all of that is satellites. Obviously in a flat world, a satellite isn't really going to do much. You have to understand the world is round before you link it up in that kind of way. I would like to argue that the digital world, just like the real world, is round and not flat. That knowledge will enable you in a very similar way. Some of the things I'd like to talk about are moving into new areas or keyword groups uh, with the help of understanding everything around you. I'd like to talk about forecasting and understand what's coming up in your world. New devices, mobile. It's either the year of the mobile or it was last year or whatever, but I'm going to talk about that bit as well. And then finally, this basic idea of benchmarking, understanding where you lie in your space and what the whole landscape looks at, having the proper satellite view of what is going on. A little bit of a proof point. I mentioned earlier this idea of most of the advertisers that do use technology are monitoring the keywords that they already know as opposed to the whole landscape. Here's a case study we did with O2 in a very competitive industry of listening to tell you there's a lot going on. We took O2's keywords, which is quite a big landscape of keywords, and we measured the share of total clicks that they were getting in this space. So what we see is 21%, which is a pretty healthy share in a pretty competitive market. However, something that we do at Via is that we don't take a keyword list that pre-exists, we take the advertiser and we use that to build the landscape that we think really relates to them. So this will include keywords around Vodafone or Carphone Warehouse. It will include keywords that are relevant to them but they might not consider or don't even know exist yet. And when you run this through the tool, you find out a very different picture. You find they only have a 9% share of voice. That's a fairly drastic difference. 
And if we're talking about measuring ourselves, benchmarking ourselves against our competition, having the flat knowledge isn't that helpful because it gives you an inflated idea of what you're doing. But having the round picture, which tells you your true share of your market, is a pretty valuable piece of knowledge. You can then understand where those gaps are and you can do something about it. Here's something else which naturally flows from this methodology. Imagine you're Google. Imagine you're in Australia in the month of May 2014, and you feel like you have had a wonderful month. It's like a really great month. Picture rates are through the ceiling, conversion rates are through the ceiling, your ROI is very healthy. In fact, here's the chart, right? So Booper, during May 2014, had this boost, particularly near the end of the month. They thought things were going very well. If you ask them at that time, then they say, well, we have a few initiatives at the moment, we're running new ad copies, we're trying out some new keywords. It seems pretty good, things are going well. But if you look at the reality around them, i.e. the true round world picture, what we see is this. Competitor number one there, anonymized a little bit because they made a bit of a blunder, basically dropped out of the market for several days. This is the true reason why Booper found a lot of success midway through May. And that context is pretty important. What we found really often across many accounts that we have is that strong performance is often due to external factors. Maybe the shop is literally closed, so maybe the call centre closes at a certain time, so they switch off search. Or perhaps the website is down, or perhaps they are having a change from one tracking platform to another, or agency changes always have an interesting effect. All kinds of things can cause your own performance to be inflated. If you don't understand that context around you, then it's pretty hard to know truly why you are performing well and carry that forward. And moreover, you might have noticed that in that chart there was about a week to go at this month. What do we know about budgets and search? Well, they tend to run on a monthly basis. These guys have just missed a whole week of spend. So what can they expect? Well, we can expect their spend to go through the roof in the final week. They are catching up with what they missed out on. And ultimately, if you're a booper, your strategy needs to adapt for that. So instead of going, we've had an amazing month, let's put our money into it, you need to be a bit more conservative. You need to pull back and kind of first position that all cost attitude, which would be very dangerous in this situation. So, as a kind of summary, the basic fundamental underlying thing this presentation is that you can be a visible hero if you see your circumstances as a whole. It makes a big difference. If you do one thing out of this presentation tomorrow, it's just go on Google, search some of your biggest search terms, and look at what's going on, see what's going on around you. It's fundamental and surprising that many people aren't doing it, but that's the way it is. The World Cup 2014. Um, if you were a betting company during the World Cup, it's probably quite fair to say that you were having a good time this year. Kind of like Google, right? Your picture rates are going to be up, your conversion rates are up, you are making a lot more money than most ones. And it's a pretty easy to reach conclusion, everything's fantastic, but search is a zero sum game. If you're in position one, that means that someone else who used to be there isn't there anymore. So not everyone can be like this. In reality, some of the betting companies have to look a little bit more like Tilt fans part of the Germany match, right? So how do we understand which one you are? Well, with the competitive context, we can look at the share of players across the market. And it's pretty drastic when you look at this year's World Cup. We took a set of generic keywords around the World Cup, and we found that William Hill, against their closest competitors, gained 72% share of the total things during this period. How did they do that? Well, I'd like to show you three key strategies which, using competitive intelligence, you can pick up, you can see what you can see that they were happening, and then if you're another advertiser against William Hill, you could use it in future. The first one is ad copy testing. Something that we really see William Hill have done during this period is very extensive ad copy testing. Here's a map of the world, and on this generic keyword sample, we see that they ran over 300 unique World Cup ads, and they mentioned plenty of countries from the World Cup, and not just the big ones. The likes of Belgium, USA, that was kind of a key, very interesting matchup for those of us which like sports better. They were on that as well. They really caught up the full range of tailored ads around the different areas they tested the different angles. What do we see elsewhere? Well, here's one of their close competitors on the same sample of keywords, the same period, one third as many ads, 
and only mentioned four different countries which did not include Brazil. It seems basic, but this is more like the common picture for advertisers uh, that we see in that space. And it's definitely something that sets William Bill apart, or at least during the World Cup period, it's certainly something that did.